Hey guys, welcome to the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Let's play a game of Name That Cable and what it's used for. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe for more content. Hey guys, so I want to do a video today on something that has been brought up multiple times and that's how to run executables in Linux. So obviously we could do emulation like Wine and that does work, but it's not the easiest way to do it. There's actually a third party tool that we could use, but it's not freeware. It's something that you would have to purchase. It comes with a 14 day trial key to give it a shot to see if it'll work for what you want it to do. But after that 14 days is up, it's 75 US dollars straight just to purchase it straight out. And that'll give you the ability to run executables natively on your Linux system. And I mean natively as in like it still uses Wine, but it has its own repository of paid um, configuration files and support to install Windows-based applications, and it works very well. So I wanna walk you through how to use it, what it does, what it gives us the ability to do, and some amazing functions and features of this actual application. So one of the things that comes up often, at least in the Microsoft application world, is how do you install Microsoft Office on Linux? And the truth is, is that without this application, it's a lot of work to get it to work at all, if not correctly, but usually at all. And it may not work 100% even with this application. It's something that you would have to try. However, I use an on-prem version of Office 2016. So for me, it's relatively straightforward for me to install it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to Google, if not Google, you just go to the generic tech support website click on the video and inside the description of the video, there will be the location as to where this actual is so you can download it. But you're gonna have to go to the website, you're gonna have to register. And the registration will give you a 14 day trial. And I suggest you install the trial and try it first to make sure that it works for what you need it to do. But to install it, I'm gonna show you through the GUI, which is really just you download the .deb if you're on a Debian based format or Linux Mint as we're looking at here going to right click and you're going to click on the open with the uh, package installer. And it'll take a couple seconds for it to populate, but once it does, you'll see the ability to install the package. Okay, so now that we can see install package, we're just going to click install package and we're going to have to enter our credentials. And that's going to install the actual package. Once it's done, we're going to get a change here that'll say remove package. or reinstall package, whatever it is. But there we go, same version is already installed. So now it's installed. So what we have to do now is we have to go to the start menu and we have to look for it. It's right there. So we're gonna click on crossover and it's gonna open the application. Now once the application is installed, it's really pretty simple, right? You just gotta find what you wanna install and install it. So you can do a search up here, but these are the popular applications to install. Now keep in mind that it will install Steam with an executable. As to whether or not that means that you can run the EXE games, that I'm not entirely sure of. I haven't tried that. However, maybe we'll give it a shot in this video. We will, however, install Microsoft Office 2016. So if I click on it, it's gonna tell me I need the disk or I need the CD or the, uh, the installation files themselves to install this. So if I double click on this up here, that should open up my office application here so we can see my executables and my installation stuff. Now, it might take a couple seconds here. I may have to refresh to get this to show the actual installation disk. So there you go. Now it allows you to do it. So my issue on this particular setup is that this application doesn't really like VMware. So in order for you to run it with VMware, you actually have to make sure the media is mounted after the application is already loaded. If not, it won't find the installation of the actual disk. Go figure. So we're just gonna click on install. We're gonna get a notification down here flashing. And since we're in a trial mode, we're just gonna hit try now, choose yes. Next, accept, next. Next, click on install, click on finish. And there's the first notification or information you're gonna see 
as to that this is working, which is amazing because now we're installing Microsoft Office natively on our Linux system. Okay, so it finished. Now I could just click on close and, of course, notify me about updates. But once that's done, you can see that I have the applications here, the bottle, right? So the bottle says that I have Office 2016. Now, if I click on start and I scroll down, I get Windows applications. And on the right hand side, I get Windows applications. So if I want to open up something like, I don't know, Microsoft Excel. I can, and there's Microsoft Excel loading up on my Linux system. So we're still on Mint, and there we go, we're running Microsoft Excel. Now the same thing works with, say, Microsoft Outlook. So we could go in here, and here's Outlook 2016. I could click on that, and there's Outlook. And I would just configure Outlook like I would on a Windows system to communicate and connect to my, uh, my mail configuration. And it works perfect it really does so if you want to run microsoft office on your linux system check out the application called crossover works great so before we end this video i had a question which was can i actually use this crossover application to install software that is not listed in the list in other words if it's not part of the installation or the application list here and we click this install an unlisted application what will happen? Will it, will it install? Will it work? Let's find out. So we're just going to click on install an unlisted application. Okay, so let's choose that and then do downloads. Let's choose Notepad++. Then it says we'll need to install this into a bottle. So we'll choose edit and we'll choose Windows 10 64-bit edition. We'll call the bottle MPP double pluses and click on done and then let's click on install and see what happens so it says installing unlisted applications we get another set of flashing down here so we're just going to continue to try we'll click on OK and next and agree and next next and install click finish and there's notepad plus plus so now presumably if I go down in here and I go into Windows applications I should be able to see maybe oh yeah there it is notepad plus plus let's click on it see what happens <laughs> it works fine so if you want to install executables and you want to do it the easy way it'll cost you 75 bucks go to genericTechSupport.com. Click on the video link, and then down in the video link, you'll find the link, the URL, to the actual crossover website. You're going to have to register and purchase it, or give it a shot for 14 days and see what you think. Leave a comment down below. So I know what you guys are thinking. Is the video over? I thought we were going to look at Steam. It's not over. So what I decided to do is jump back into the system and actually run the installation process for crossover for Steam to see if it is possible to install. And I was notified through the Steam application that I'm not running the most up-to-date configuration for OpenGL. Um, it also indicates that this may impact my application for Microsoft Office 2016. However, it does not. It seems to work fine. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attempt to do the install and see what happens. So I clicked on skip this step because all that's doing is running a check against my OpenGL configuration for my graphics card drivers. And right now, I don't really care about that. I just want to know whether or not this is possible to be installed as it is. I also don't know that we have enough drive space to install it completely because I think this system only has 25 gigs of uh, drive space. But let's continue on and see what happens anyway. Well, it does install. It is installed. So that was installed using the, the executable in the downloads directory. Now, just so you know, the install portion of this system seems to have a direct connection with the download di downloads directory on your Linux machine. So if you put EXEs in there, you should be able to uh, access them directly through the application. So let's click on this thing and see what happens. All right, so it's updating Steam. And again, we're running the EXE version. We're not running the Debian version of Steam on our machine here. So 
it would be interesting to find out once this is installed, can we actually run games that run EXEs? Because one of the biggest problems with Linux with Steam is that if you purchased a whole bunch of games that were really Windows native, there's no real way to play them on your Linux system. But if this crossover application gives us the ability to do so, that's game changing. So I did attempt to log in using my own personal Steam account and unfortunately it fails the login. It passes the authentication, gets the multi-factor authentication, I enter in my details and then automatically it just craps out and dies. So it does not appear to work right, but that doesn't mean it won't work right on your system. I would still give it a shot and see what happens. You may be in a better situation if you decide to install the correct drivers for your video card. I run the OpenGL because it works well with my VMware configuration and everything else. If I install the later drivers and everything else on my main machine, it may help the VM to actually function correctly, but I'm not gonna screw around with drivers on a Linux system on VMware player. It's just not worth it. It'll end up causing more issues and headaches than it's worth. And it's just not necessary. However, if you are at home and you install the crossover and you install the Steam and it works to run EXE games, leave a comment down below for everybody else that's trying this. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching this one and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one soon. Let me know again down in the comments. Have you tried it? Does it work with Steam? Let me know if you've tried this application with other stuff and uh, how it's worked out for you. All right, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Find the content of this video at https genericTechSupport.com forward slash hashtag channel.